In this video, I'll be talking about how we can solve wave equation in one dimension using final difference. So this is uh, on lecture notes, page 181. The wave equation in one dimension can be written as the second derivative of displacement u with respect to time equals v, which is the velocity of um, propagating wave or the traveling wave and then times uh, v squared times the second derivative of u with respect to, to position. So first we know that to do the final difference for us we need to convert that into a first order system. This is second order differential equation we have to convert it into first order and we know that by doing so we end up getting a first order system. So the system we get is uh, like this, where we have three components in our unknown vector, R, S, U. So let's see what each of these variables is. R is V times du dx, and S is du dt. If we assume these two variables, then we can double check that d dt of R which means d dt of this is going to be v d squared u dx dt and that's going to be exactly v ds dx so this is s and v ds dx is going to be v second derivative of u with respect to x and t so this equality holds you can also double check that ds dt is going to be v dr dx and then the last equation is du dt by definition. du dt by definition is equal to s. And that's what we have in the last equation. So what I've done so far is I've converted my second order differential equation to a first order system. You see there's only one derivative and that's with respect to time. Um, all right. And then also the first derivative with respect to x. So we can now use our, uh, let's say, forward in time and central in the space to discretize this equation. And if you do that, uh, we can go ahead and do this for the first, second, and third equation. For the first one, forward in time is going to be Rn plus 1 minus Rn at time j, divided by del t, because that's d, 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 t. So I'm basically discretizing the first equation here. Is equal, to, is equal to v and I'm going to do central difference on this piece which is s at time n j plus 1 j minus 1 because that central difference divided by 2 del x the difference between this point and that point okay so because this is central difference in x it's going to be o del x squared this one is first order in time so it's going to be o del t so overall our met method is going to be o del t o del x squared We've got to do the same thing with s and u. So with s, forward in time, and then central in a space on this term. So it's going to be v and then rj plus 1, rj minus 1. And then the last term is again forward in time, so n plus 1 n, divided by del t at point j is equal to s. Now we have to do central difference on s, but because s there is no derivative, Central difference on, on S is going to be just SJ at time N. All right, so I discretized my first order system into three discretized equations. All right, so if you will, we can, <clears throat> we can convert this system to a nice form like this. So there's no difference between this equation and this. The only thing is I just converted it into matrix representation. So uh, I got the first comp first two components here, first two components there, and then I convert it to a system. So what you get is DDT of R and S. Move this one to the left, you get plus. And then because of this move, you get a negative V, negative V. So that's negative V, negative V. And then this is a 2 by 2 times d 
ddx of rms, the same thing as we had in this vector. So if you multiply every row of this equation, you would get the same as these two. All right, so what is the benefit of this? This, this actually gives us a better picture of writing this equation as du d or dy dt. If you think of this as y vector, it's going to be dy dt plus a, this is a, times ddx of y. So this is exactly first order advection equation we had before, where this a is now playing the role of velocity. This is the derivative in time, this is the derivative in a space. So the, the method we used for advection equation now applies here. All right. And then for the last equation here, uh, for the last piece here, um, we can do the same thing for what in time center on a space because th these are for the first two and for the last element we do the same thing. Uh, and if you remember from advection equation, uh, writing it as forward in time center on a space, I can write it as n plus one n at point xj for vector y is equal to negative a and then uh, at point n central difference in space it's going to be j plus one j minus one divided by two del x all right so let's look at a matlab implementation of this using a half cos squared wave so let's say i initially have a wave like a half cosine and then i'm going to see how it propagates in in a space so at this time I'm going to switch to MATLAB and show you how that is implemented. So here is the MATLAB script. All right, so this is pretty much like our upwind scheme we had from before. I don't, I didn't do anything. I just uh, put in my A matrix and the velocities in here. So let's assume velocity is one because we tend to think about usually the alpha that we have in the equation needs to be less than one. But remember, this is forward in time center in space. This is unconditionally stable, regardless of the alpha. The method always diverges. Okay, so number of points, number of x, number of uh, x values, number of time points, initial time, final time, left x, right x, velocity is equal to 1, skip for animation, create a time vector, that's dt, difference between two time points, x vector, and then dx, which is the difference between two x points, I create a mesh grid, which is my space-time coordinate, I initialize everything to 0, so my u mat, so u mat is going to be the u, well, let's look at that, u mat so u is basically u is u and then i rename these two as y vector in here so that's why i have y and u all right y old y new this is my a matrix if you remember and for stability i remember we had to look at the eigenvalues and then uh you know talk about cfl condition based on the eigenvalues the lambda del x where lambda is the eigenvalue of the matrix this matrix A. Okay, uh, this is my initial wave um, creation. So I created a wave, a half cosine wave here. Um, because this is forward in time, you need to we need to set up uh, the y value at the first time point. So when when t is equal to one, let's say. I have to create my y, I have to know my y values for every x, so that's why I have this equation, which is um, yeah, so this piece is a central difference and um, so I'm using uh, basically central difference to to do the, uh, as I have here, to do the du, uh, v du dx equal to r, and then s is going to be du dt. So, um, 
So this is going to be the first element of y, which is r. The second element of y is going to be s, uh, and that is calculated in the second set of equations here. And then for the third one, I use this equation. So this is the differential equation for the first two variable, r and s. This is for u, the last element in my unknown vector. And this is to set the initial condition, which is basically, uh, so if you think of this, um, yeah, I'm just uh, looking at, so I set up the uh, the u, which is the u, the u vector, which is um, the last element in my unknown vector. So this is u, I calculate u first, and then r and s based on u because I know u from initial conditions. So then I have u, based on that u, I calculate uh, my r, which is the first element of y. And then s is going to be calculated in the differential equation. All right, so there you go. So let's run the code and see what happens. So here's my initial wave. Because this is wave equation, the wave is going to propagate in both directions, the plus and the plus and then the minus direction. So you see that immediately after a few time steps, errors uh, grow in time, and then basically that dominates the whole solution. So that is what we call unstable method. That means regardless of alpha, which is v dt dx, the method never gets right solution because the error actually gets over the exact solution and you don't see anything. So th these are basically because of the unstable method or the instability propagates through. But initially you see that no waves are going left and right. So the initial setup is right, but then numerical errors uh, kick in and spoil not solution. So I'm going to stop the code. The rest of it is just for animation and time space plot that we saw before. So this is the time space plot, you can think of it. This is x, this is time, and you see that you start with one wave and then you split it into two waves, but then errors show up. Basically these are steel images of the, of the video. Put them all into x time, and then this thing is the displacement of the wave. All right, so we realize that this method doesn't work and we have to switch to a different method. So now next we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about lax Fredericks, which we know is at least conditionally stable depending on alpha. And, and we see how you know, we can solve the wave equation. But before that, I'm going to show you why forward in time center in space is unstable. We can use uh, von Neumann stability analysis as we did before. This is our this is a different difference equation. We replace y and j by the usual uh, exponential form of the error. We plug in everything in there. We can you do the cancellation. You find that x is going to be like this: one minus lambda delta over del x sine beta, where beta is k del x. Uh, and then times i, which is the imaginary number. Now this is c, you need to find the norm of c, which is this times complex conjugate of it. And you see that by doing so, the norm is going to be 1 plus this thing squared, which is telling us that it is going to be always positive, because 1 is going to be positive, plus this thing squared is always positive, so total is positive, and definitely bigger than 1. So c, turns out to be bigger than 1, in the magnitude of it, and that tells us that the method is unstable, because no matter what we do, the magnitude of the error is going to be bigger than 1, and everything bigger than 1 is going to go up in time, because that's based to the n power. So the method is unconditionally unstable. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can uh, circumvent this condition, and be able to uh, limit the error, and make, an un make a stable method using Max Fredericks. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.